seeing them. So they landed here, but the local Irish like, were going like, well, uh, right, we'll help you, oh, free old Ireland, blah, blah, blah. But there weren't enough Irish and there weren't enough foreigners. And they brought a lot of arms, but there were, there were bayonets and, and, and axes and things where the English had guns. So, oh. eh. so anyway, it was 500, uh, uh, were, were, 600 were captured, uh, 600 plus, because it was about 500 fighting men and then a lot of women and children. Uh, Smerwick Harbour is across here, the other side. And they were being brought here to Dingle. And the English captain then decided it's not worth feeding this lot. So he slaughtered them all, men, women and children. And the heads were thrown in the field and the bodies were thrown in this stream to be washed out to sea. So that the people couldn't even bury their dead. This was a terrible thing. I mean, it's a big, big thing in Ireland to, to have to be buried in Ireland. And the bodies were washed out to sea. So this has ever since afterwards been known as Moni uh, sorry, uh, Kortnipik, the head of the skulls, or the field of the skulls. Um, and this was the bridge that the English then crossed and went on. Now, they did release the officers, the foreign officers, uh, because they could ransom them. All war is for profit. It's... it's the Romans have said it, the Greeks have said it, Karl Marx have said it, so it must be true. <laughs> All war is for profit, so when you capture officers, you ransom them. The ordinary soldiers... Roman